so I need all your help. My first question is going to be, where do you want to work when you graduate? I need some company names. That's only a board. It's only a board. <laughs> Good one. Somebody else? Down? Uh, which airline company? I need specific names. KQ, okay. Somebody else? Sorry? Google Kenya. Google Kenya. Interesting one. Right at the back. KPLC. KPLC. Okay. Unilever. Unilever. Okay, great. Anybody else that's different? Yeah. Have your own oh, have your own company. Wow. Interesting one. Interesting one. Anybody else? Lampak. Sorry? Lampak. Lampak. What do they do? Sorry? It's a company based in Tika. Sorry, sorry? It's a company based in Tika. They do packaging. They do packaging. Okay, great. <laughs> I think somebody else's hand was up. You had that, eh? Nampak? They deal in packaging, isn't it? Okay. Somebody else? Someone had their hand up about that. NASA. Sorry? NASA. NASA. Okay, great. Well, I have news for you. And that news is not very good news. Uh, from my own experience. From my own experience, it's not... Many of you will not work for the companies that you've mentioned. Okay, because let me ask you, how many engineers do you think Unilever hires every year? Very few. Less than 10. <laughs> Less than 10. Okay, so when are you going to work? Does that worry you? Sorry? It doesn't worry you, okay? Great. <laughs> well, I'll give you my own story. My own story is, when I was in fifth year, again, I was at the University of Nairobi doing mechanical engineering, and some of those firms that you've mentioned, including Pricewaterhouse, came to our college to try and recruit. And I didn't make the cut. Okay, so I ended up working not too far from here in a little manufacturing company called Frigocare. I don't know if you've heard of Frigocare. It's like Nampak for me as well. <laughs> okay. Now, Frigocan, what they do is they export canned beans, canned French beans, and they put them into little tins and export them to France and to the UK. They've basically got two markets and don't sell any French beans locally. Okay? And I went there to be a maintenance engineer. And my responsibility, I guess like Peter at, at uh, Zaria, or Morani? Morani Sugar. Morani Sugar was basically to take care of the boilers, to take care of my fitters, to take care of the guys who are in charge of the boiler. Anything and everything, refrigeration, retorts in terms of the <coughs> boiler systems, all that was my responsibility, okay? Definitely not what I had bargained for when I was graduating from university. I wanted to be a Unilever guy, and the top student in our class went to work for Pricewaterhouse, I guess like someone has mentioned, okay? But unfortunately, what happened is when I joined the company, three months down the road, the engineer who was my boss, you're right, I don't know whether he was a registered engineer, <laughs> had to leave the company because he got a job offer to move off to Canada. Okay, and as a new recruit, I ended up being the head of the engineering department. Notice I did not say I became the engineer of the company. <laughs> 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 was in charge of the engineering department. What did that mean? It meant that now I had to manage guys who I did not know, I had no management experience, and these are guys who basically reported to my boss who was maybe 10 years older than I was, and I had to very quickly learn to manage. Apart from that, I reported to the general manager of the company, Okay, which meant that I had to learn procurement. Do you think I had to do that? Mm. Why do I need to learn procurement? Anybody? Do you have any ideas? I love your white scarf. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Okay. 
if I need to buy anything, guess what? As an engineer, I must be able to be the one to procure it. Okay? When we have farms, because the French beans, we basically have farms out there. We have trucks which go out to pick up French mm. beans in the farms. Out it was out in Morana, in Meru, and then they started something in Kisi as well. Okay? Now what that meant is the fact that I need to understand field operations as well. Okay. Now what am I trying to get at? It's because of the experience of having to work for um, Trigoken, as an engineer and not Unilever, I got to understand business more broadly that if I went to a company that only had, um, that was a bigger company and that was more structured and had, had many more engineers. I'll point out something to you in, in Engineer um, Nyoke's presentation. Guess how old he was when he was managing the project between um, the Garissa project. Early 30s. Okay, somebody else? 25. Somebody else? The gentleman in a beautiful orange shirt. Sorry? I think about 28. Okay, there's also the I guess being the person who's presenting, I get the opportunity to get the right answer for <laughs> Wow. He was 28. Okay. That's not too far from how old you are today, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> oh, it is a long way away. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just say it's maybe, let's even call it five years or six years from the point where you graduate, you need to manage a road project on your own. Okay? It means that you need to have developed certain skills, certain skill sets that are not only engineering. True? Mm. Now, are you, how hard are you working at being able to pick up those skills? That's important. Because guess what? When you're 28, if you're fortunate enough and you structure it well, like Engineer Wanyoke, you'll be in charge of a very big project. Okay? It will not be a 1 million shilling project. It will not be a 10 million shilling project. It might not even be a 100 million shilling project. Billions. It will be in billions. Now, are you ready, or let me put it this way, are you going to be ready when you're 28 to manage a billion shilling project? Now, sometimes I think we get lost in what a billion is. A billion is a thousand million. <laughs> <laughs> because I think the number gets thrown around, we sometimes get to forget. It's a thousand what? Million. Yeah. So if you think of a million as a big number, well, guess what? A thousand of those. Okay? So I just want to say, as a summary, my experience of, of, of having grown up, not getting into the Unilever, going into Frigoken. After that, I went into consulting a bit. I worked for Howard Humphreys for a period of time before I went to do my master's. And then came back and worked for Coca-Cola for five, six years. I got a return <coughs> in the big league, and that was fun. Okay. But unfortunately, in year 1999, during the heydays of a gentleman called Kamesh Bhatni, Kenya shut down, okay? And I don't want to blame Kamlesh alone, it was just the fact that there are many things that were not going right, I guess, like engineer mentioned. And the reality was, a lot of industries were not doing as well. So you can get out at the wrong time. Guess what, you guys are getting out at the right time because there's a lot of construction going on. We've just discovered oil, you guys know that? <laughs> you guys know that, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I read something um, this morning that said that, guess what, the, the, the oil wells that we're tapping into are the same oil, uh, uh, oil wells that Saudi Arabia is tapping into. Now, if wow. that's the thing, we need to be really scared. <laughs> and I mean really scared positively because the opportunities are going to be yes. huge. Okay, not really scared in terms of we're going to start fighting. That's a, <laughs> you know, that has nothing to do with engineering. What needs to concern you is the fact that if we have as much oil as Saudi Arabia has, then guess what? How am I, as an engineer, ready to take the opportunities that are going to be presented by that new Kenya? Okay. Three issues I think that are important for you. Skills, market, and passion. Skills, what are you good at? Some of the things that have been mentioned, I guess, by Chow was a 
about the whole idea of Pricewaterhouse. Why is it that Pricewaterhouse would want to come here and recruit auditors? It's because of the fact that you have analytical, your great analytical skills because of your training. I had a couple of conversations, and one of the things I, that, I was, that I mentioned to a gentleman I was speaking to was just the fact that one of the most wonderful things you can learn in university is to learn how to learn. Okay? Not to learn engineering, not to learn management, not to learn marketing, <coughs> is to learn how to learn. Now that means I should give you anything, any subject, and you should be able to be able to dig up in six months and understand it <coughs> to a decent level of competence. And I challenge you to basically look at the qualifications of people who head institutions such as the World Bank, such as Citibank. You'd be amazed at some of the, the most popular course in Oxford University today, where a lot of organizations go to fund um, for top level managers. What do you think that course is? What do you think is the most popular course in Oxford University? First, you know where Oxford is in. <laughs> <laughs> What, what could it be, guys? Yes. yes. Gentlemen? Sorry? An MBA? Okay, no, it's an undergraduate course. Let me give you a hint. It's an undergraduate course. <coughs> Management? No. No? Economics? Close. Okay, it's a BA, it's a BA, and it's in economics, philosophy, the only thing, the last thing is politics and government. Okay, they call it, polit they call it, basically government, it's normally called government in most universities, philosophy and economics. Okay, and I challenge you, basically look at some of the top managers in many of the international organizations in Kenya, the Coca-Colas, the Unilevers, the um, city banks and places like that. It's because of the fact that you have to develop certain skills that the job market is looking for. Because guess what? As a person who has understood what skills the market is looking for, you can develop those skills even as you sit in university or have the ability that when you go out, even with your mechanical engineering degree or civil engineering degree, you can easily adapt to be able to see where the opportunities lie for you and be able to take advantage of those things. Because guess what? My skills must be matched to my market. Okay? And market includes things like, you've seen the, a lot of the construction that's happening right now with the Kenya Roads Board, Pura, Rural. All those are opportunities that are hungry and waiting for great talent to come out and work in those fields. In the new counties. And the new counties? The county devolution. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of stuff. Absolutely. You had that from India as well? <laughs> well. Absolutely. So are you, do you think of the county government as an issue that is political? Or do you think it as an issue that produ pro provides opportunities for engineers? You need to think of it that way. That those are markets that are sitting out there and waiting for great talent. I've had a lot of people say, and it's a wrong perception again you know, in covering my second point in the market, that there are no jobs. Do you think that is true? Do you think there are no jobs? The gentleman where Peter was sitting, do you think there are no jobs? Do you think? Yes. Why do you think so? your secret uh, and add to that which is just a correction on the last bit about payment people are willing to pay great salaries for great talent for the right yeah. people for the right people. the people are not yeah. <laughs> now I didn't say that did I <laughs> <laughs>